What's going on, everyone? James Lynch here. This is Early Look, the show where I take a look at an upcoming notable fight. And on today's edition, we're going to be taking a look at the July 23rd heavyweight main event headlining UFC London between Tom Aspinall and Curtis Blades. But before I give you my preview and pick, make sure you hit that like button, hit the subscribe button, and hit that notification bell. If you do those three things, you'll be helping me out big time. Let's get into it. Curtis Blades, Tom Aspinall, really interesting fight in terms of a uh, sort of a veteran taking on a prospect here in Aspinall. Love the matchmaking here. I mean, you can't really go wrong with heavyweight matchmaking these days. This division is so exciting. Um, let's get into the fact that this is the main event. It's going to be five rounds. This is taking place at the O2 Arena in London. And let's get our tail of the tape here, shall we? Oh, I've got it already up here. So there you go. Curtis Blade's taking on Tom Aspinall. Let's start with Tom Aspinall first. You know, he's the hometown guy. Figure we'll get him out of the way first, and then we'll get to Curtis Blades. So you can see there, Tom Aspinall, an impressive 12 and two record, nine knockouts, three submissions, zero decisions. He is 29 years old. He's six foot five with a 78 inch reach, so he's two years younger than Curtis Blades. He's also going to have a one inch height advantage in this fight, which is pretty rare, right? Curtis Blades usually a, a pretty tall fighter when he's uh, um, you know in the cage, but it is heavyweight, so you're going to have bigger guys for sure. Uh, right now, Tom Aspinall is the at the time of recording this is the um, number sixth ranked heavyweight. That's correct. Where are we? Oh, whoops. Why do they put the, they should put the heavyweight classes first. Uh, heavyweight. He is number six. That's correct. Uh, he has a BJJ black belt and he trains at team uh, Cowboy Liverpool, which is the same gym as Darren Till. I mentioned that in the other video. Uh, and Tom Aspen, I'll check this out. Within his short UFC career, he has had performance of the night four times versus Jake Collier, Andre Arlovsky, Sergey Spivak, and Alexander Volkov. Another interesting thing with Aspinall, he actually has a professional boxing fight. He had that in June of 2017. It was a first round finish over a guy by the name of Tamis, Tamis Badge, Badgezath. Hope I'm saying that right. But either way, he's obviously got some hands and we've seen that with the nine knockouts throughout his career. Now, Tom Aspinall, uh, going all the way back here, he uh, made his amateur debut in March of 2013. And you can see there went 5-0 and as an amateur then made his MMA debut in December of 2014. Uh, three fights in, he ended up, uh, four fights in, I should say, he ended up getting his first loss there to Stuart Austin. Then he lost again um, a few fights later, which is interesting. But since then, he has not lost. There's the Tamas fight I was telling you about, by the way. Uh, didn't make his uh, UFC debut. Oh, yeah, actually, sorry. One thing I wanted to mention about his um, professional MMA debut he only made his MMA debut seven months later than Curtis Blades. So, you know, they're, in terms of both them starting their careers, uh, it was, you know, not that far apart as far as, you know, when they both made their UFC debuts. We'll talk about that a little bit later. But um, yeah, I just thought that was an interesting tidbit that um, you can see here. Aspinall making his debut in December of 2014. Curtis Blades made his uh, pro MMA debut back in uh, May of 2014. So that's kind of interesting there that uh, just seven months apart there. Anyways, let's get to the rest of this. Uh, Aspinall made his UFC debut in July of 2020 against Jake Collier. Uh, since then, he has, and that was, uh, oh yeah, and so that was the other thing I was going to mention is that he made his debut in July of 2020. That was four years after Curtis Blades. So even though they both started their pro careers just seven months apart, it was four years later that Aspinall made his debut. And that's a variety of reasons, I'm sure. You know, obviously Cage Warriors and some of the promotions he's fought in, um, you know, they're, they're good promotions. There's no rush. I think you see a lot of American fighters, especially a heavyweight, get rushed to the UFC, whereas maybe not so much for the UK fighters. That's just my theory, I'm guessing, as to why it took four years for Aspinall to get in the UFC compared to Blades. Um, also, we, we mentioned the two losses there earlier on. Blades, I believe, was undefeated uh, prior to him going in the UFC. Okay. Um, he's 5-0 in the UFC. Some notable wins. Uh, I mean, you can't really call Collier or Badeau any notable wins. Andre Arlovsky's a notable win. Spivak's kind of, you know, hovering around, you know, sort of being a... I, I don't think... Is he actually ranked right now? He is not. So I don't know if I'd count Spivak in that category, but Alexander Volkov, that was a really impressive win. Considering how durable Volkov's been uh, throughout his career, if you look at the amount of times he's been finished, it's not many, including that one loss to Derek Lewis, which is literally at the last second. So for him to finish Volkov in the first round, that's very, very impressive. And also why he's getting such a big opportunity here. Uh, Aspinall's not had any key losses in the UFC. As I mentioned, he's 5-0. and He also hasn't had any major layoffs here. Look at this, two fights a year pretty much. Uh, so keeping really active. Also, no major um, injuries here. If you look at it here, Spivak was the one that withdrew from their fight. Pavlovic had visa issues in their fight. And then Shamil um, Asmol ended up getting rebooked in that fight with uh, Alexander Volkov. So yeah, no, in, no major injuries or, or layoffs here for Tom Aspinall. He's also never had any close fights because he doesn't go the distance. So that's another thing we can kind of throw out the window. So again, a shorter breakdown on Tom Aspinall, but that's just because a lot of, there's not much to talk about him. I mean, again, good boxing, good submissions, young guy, um, 
Like I said, big heavyweight for the division. Um, a lot to like about Tom Aspinall at 12 and 2. Okay, let's get to his opponent here. Curtis Blades, shall we? Why don't we do that? Curtis Razor Blades, someone I've uh, been lucky enough to interview since he was on the regional scene. I remember, I think the first interview I did with Curtis was when he fought for RFA. So very familiar with Curtis in this fight. He's 16 and three. He's got one no contest. We'll talk about that BS no contest in a second here. He's got 11 knockouts, zero submission and five decisions. This is one of the things that drives me nuts is when people say that Curtis Blades is a boring fighter. He's got 11 knockouts and 16 fights. Uh, sorry, 16 wins. Uh, six, 11 of his 16 wins are by knockout. Total fights, he's got what? 20 fights, 11 knockouts. That's half of his fights have knockouts. So, you know, Blades, I think because of that Volkov fight, people are like, oh, he's boring. He's not a boring fighter. He's a very good fighter. And we saw that in the last fight. Uh, Blades is 31 years old. He's six foot four with an 80 inch reach. So he's going to have a two inch reach advantage in this fight. But like I mentioned, Aspinall taller, and he's also going to be a little bit younger here. He's a BJJ blue belt. He trains out of Elevation Fight Team, and he's currently the number fourth ranked heavyweight in the division. As you can see here, Curtis Blades had his amateur debut way back in um, September 2012, made his MMA debut in July, uh, May of 2014, and then had his UFC debut in April of 2016. So just with five fights, if you think back now and you think of you know the fact that we have contender series and all that, so just his fifth pro fight, he's in the UFC. So I remember I talked about earlier about Aspinall making his debut a bit later. They kind of rushed Curtis. And poor Curtis, his debut was against Francis Nagano, who no one at the time knew he was going to be the heavyweight champion. So kind of a, a tough fight there. Um, he's 11-3 and three in the UFC. The one no contest against Adam Milstead, it was, it was for marijuana. Like, come on. 2022 still getting people busted for marijuana i know it's part of the rules but that had no effect on that fight he was going to beat adam milstead regardless of whether he smoked up or he didn't so realistically curtis blades could be 17 and 3 and not 16 3 with a no contest just wanted to point that out uh so yeah he's 11 and 3 in the ufc with one no contest he's got six six stoppage victories in the ufc again um, you, you look at it there six stoppage wins is pretty impressive some notable wins he's had he's got a lot here uh, alexi olenek mark hunt former title challenger, Alistair Overeem, who ended up training with later, Junior Dos Santos, Alexander Volkov, Yarzino Rosenstrike, and Chris Dawkus, who, again, Dawkus is kind of like Aspinall, an up-and-coming uh, heavyweight, and to go out there and finish him the way he did, very impressive there. He's only got, he's only lost to two guys in his career. One of them he's lost to twice, and that's Naganu, Naganu there and Naganu here. And then he got knocked out by Derek Lewis as well. Quick thing I want to mention about this, again, because people always talk about Curtis Blades and you know him being knocked out and taking a lot of damage. So he'll be the first one to tell you this. He got knocked out by Naganu twice. He wasn't knocked out cold in those fights. So he was, you know, TKO loss, still had his wits about him, still walked away from the cage. So that's a key thing here because people talk about, oh, Curtis is taking a ton of damage. So certainly knockouts are not good for you, but he wasn't knocked out cold. The only fight he's been knocked out cold was Derek Lewis. And that was a simple mistake. He was winning the, the first round of that fight. He came out in the second just kind of ducked his head under and Lewis did an uppercut and, and knocked him out and Blades was out cold in that fight. But overall, hasn't taken a ton of damage compared to some of the other heavyweights in that weight class. So just wanted to point that out. And obviously got to state the obvious too. I always feel like I have to educate people on this. Curtis Blades has had a stutter since he was a kid. It's not that he has CTE. I see so many ignorant people go out there and say, oh, those Nagano losses sure, sure have made his speech bad. His speech has always been this way. Don't believe me. Go look at the interview I did with him on this channel in RFA. He sounds exactly the same. And at that point, he hadn't had a single loss. So just want to point that out too as sort of an extra tidbit here in the breakdown. Uh, like Tom Aspinall, Curtis Blades really has not had any layoffs. He's also never had any major injuries either. If you look at it here, um, you know, he got COVID. I think he's had COVID twice now, but that's about it. He really has not taken any much time off and he's been fighting consistently, you know, a couple times a year. Look at this 2018, he fought three times. Um, 2017, he fought three times, like one of the more active heavyweights in the weight class. Like Aspinall, and like you would expect at heavyweight, no real close fights. He has gone the distance before, but uh, the fights were pretty decisive in his favor. And yeah, that's pretty much the, the talk of the tale here on Curtis Blades. Again, with these heavyweight fights, because you don't get a lot of decision wins or a lot of close fights, uh, you're not going to have a lot to talk about with these guys uh, in terms of, you know, extra, extra, you know, decisions or injuries or whatever. So not a lot to talk about with uh, Curtis Blades as far as uh, everything else. Now we know Blades is good at wrestling. I'd say he's one of the best wrestlers, if not the best wrestler in the heavyweight division, but he's fighting a guy in Aspinall who's dangerous everywhere. And he's a little bit younger here. So let's look at the odds. You can see right now, Tom Aspinall, the favorite at minus 115, although on DraftKings, but then other books have had the, the line go the other way with Curtis Blades. I think this is one of the toughest fights to predict because you have a guy in Blades who has proven to beat top level talent, except for Nagano. And I know Derek Lewis, but honestly, I think if Curtis fought Derek Lewis again, he would beat him. I really do. And maybe that's, you know, you can disagree with me there, but um, I, I just think Blades 
you know, that was, he made a mistake. He, he, he paid for it, but Naganu clearly he's lost to him, but losing to Naganu, that's not bad. I'd say, you know, Blades is a contender in this weight class. He's very good. Um, but I do wonder how he'll do against a guy like Aspinall, who's kind of like Dawkins in a way where he's, you know, Dawkins is very good and mobile and, and good everywhere and a younger fighter sort of, actually, I shouldn't say that. Uh, I believe Dawkins is actually older than Blades, if I'm not mistaken. Let me just double check that real quick. Um, but you sort of think of Aspinall in the same way that you think of uh, Chris Dawkins in the sense that they're new to the UFC, right? They don't have a ton of fights. Yeah, Dawkins is 32, so Curtis Blades is 31. So yeah, Dawkins was older, but you kind of get what I'm saying here, both up and coming heavyweights. So I see this fight playing out one, two, one of two ways, but don't worry, I will give you a pick in this fight. Let me just get to the pick right now. I'm picking Tom Aspinall. I love Curtis Blades. Again, enjoy interviewing him. I've been following his career for a while. I would like nothing more than Curtis Blades to go out there and, and you know, get a win like this and continue his rise and get that heavyweight title shot, right? That's the one thing that Blades has not had in his career is a heavyweight title shot. I think it would be great if he go into London and, and beat Tom Aspinall. I think it's possible. I think if Blades survives the first couple of rounds with Aspinall and it goes into deep waters, you know that Blades has the cardio to go five rounds. I know people will point out that, oh, he slowed down against Volkov. He still won the fight. It's not like Volkov was having any success late in those rounds. Blades was still beating him. So we know Blades can go five rounds. We know Blades has got good wrestling. I'd say Blades is probably the best wrestler that Aspinall's fought to this point. So, you know, if Aspinall can't stuff a takedown, it's going to be most likely a Blades decision or a late Blades finish here. But I'm not picking Blades. I'm picking Tom Aspinall in this fight. Why? Because I think Aspinall is too fast of a starter here. Aspinall... He's young, he's speedy, he's good on the ground, he's good in the stand-up. I think he can potentially catch Curtis Blades in this fight. And I know Blades has, you know, obviously seen the Derek Lewis fight, he's seen the Naganu fights twice. Those two have more power than Aspinall does. I still think with Aspinall's speed, there's a possibility that he could catch Curtis Blades here. That's the thing that worries me. As great as Blades is, and again, like, like I said, like I think he has a clear advantage here in the wrestling and you know the striking I think will be pretty even but I could see a point where Aspinall is able to get in on there and, and catch him just because he's so fast I talk about this in some of the other breakdowns Aspinall is one of those guys that does things you just don't see other heavyweights doing he's so fast he's so mobile the guy looks like a like a middleweight light heavyweight but he's a heavyweight and he, and he moves around extremely fast and the thing I like is that this guy can finish you on the feet he can finish you on the ground and he does these little things where it's like kind of an x-factor that's why I think he can beat blades so I'm going to go Tom Aspinall second round knockout to get it done over Curtis Blades. I think he figures out his timing. He catches Blades somewhere and he just goes in for the kill. And, you know, like I said, I think this is going to be a huge win for him and potentially getting a title shot here or something close to it uh, with, with the win. Now, if Aspinall can't take Blades out early, it's going to be a long night for him. And that's where I see Blades taking over and potentially winning a decision here. So I think if you're looking to bet this fight, if you want to go that route, maybe do the Aspinall by knockout because I think that's one of the ways he could win. Although maybe you play it safe and go inside the distance. Maybe he knocks Blades down and then goes for the submission because we obviously seen his ground game be very, very good. But I think if Blades wins, I see it being a decision. I don't see him finishing Aspinall. So that's where I could see Blades maybe winning there. So maybe you could get creative with the props, go Blades by decision, Aspinall inside the distance and, and figure it out from there. But my pick's going to be Tom Aspinall. But like I said, Curtis Blades can absolutely win this fight. To me, there's more proof of Blades beating high level guys and there's Tom Aspinall so there's that he has on his side but I just think Aspinall I'm kind of taking a gamble here and saying that this guy's special and because he's special I think he'll do, give something to Blades that Blades hasn't seen before and get the win so I want to know what you guys think in the comment section below who are you picking in this fight Tom Aspinall Curtis Blades let's have a discussion here let's respectfully talk about this fight and where you see the fight going follow me on Twitter and on Instagram at Lynch on sports make sure you hit that like button hit the subscribe button and hit that notification bell on this video and if there's any other fights you guys want me to break down that are coming up you know it doesn't even have to be a main event just maybe be a really interesting fight you want me to go through the stats and give you my preview and pick let me know i'm always open to hearing feedback i'm james lynch thanks so much for watching and i'll see you guys next time thanks so much for tuning in